Good morning, welcome to St Mary Sabia on this Easter Sunday morning. Let's start with the Easter acclamation. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be looking at a story we all know well from Luke 24. But before we do that, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we now come to the resurrection story again, fill our hearts with joy at the promises it makes and the reassurance it gives. In Jesus' name, Amen. For us, this morning is filled with joy, but not so on that first Easter Sunday morning. It was a dark day filled with mourning and sadness. The women had gone looking for a body. Despite being told that Jesus would rise again, he's told them repeatedly in the scriptures, there was no expectation. They were overwhelmed with grief. They didn't expect anything more than sorrow and mourning. They were taking flowers, equivalent, uh, the equivalent of taking flowers to a cemetery. And if you take flowers to a cemetery, you do not expect to see an empty grave. And if you did see one, would it occur to you that the deceased has risen from the dead? Of course not. So on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women take what's appropriate to the scene. They take spices and they went to prepare Christ's body for his eternal death. They went to the tomb. But they're met, as we read in the message, by an open tomb and an angel saying, why are they looking for Jesus amongst the dead? And today, even within the church, this is still something that holds true. One writer put I read this week put it like this. There are resurrection ch denying churches. They look for Jesus among the dead. They love the example of the dead Jesus, the suffering Christ. They preach his courage, his conviction, even his faith. Sentimentality fills their sermons with language about recurrent spring making hope eternal and butterflies discarding chrysalises. But the R word is never used, except metaphorically. But that's not what happened. Jesus physically, bodily rose from the dead. And the angels remind, these people in white clothes remind the women of what he told them, that the men, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests of the teachers of the law, and must be killed and on the third day raised to life. That's in Luke 9, 22, and in Matthew 16, 21. Also, immediately after the transfiguration, he said to his apostles, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him. That's Mark 9 and Matthew 17. If they listened to the words of Jesus, it would have all made sense. And if we listen to the scriptures, it makes sense. Jesus told us he would rise again. Even if we go back as far as the book of Genesis, we're told that he will defeat Satan. He will defeat death. In the opening words, after Adam and Eve's sin is committed, as part of the punishment, God gives hope. And it's really important that we get the physical resurrection of Jesus right. It's not just an interesting doctrinal con conversation because it has implications. First implication of Jesus rising from the dead is that it ensures regeneration. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. We are affected by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And we are seen by God as raised to new life in the same way as he was. Our dead, sin-filled lives are raised to new life with Christ. And we see the power at work in us. And ultimately, when we die, we will see ourselves regenerate as new beings in Christ's presence. So it's really important that it, we see Jesus's death and resurrection in the right light because it ensures our regeneration as people born afresh, born anew. Secondly, it ensures our justification. A reading from Romans 4, 25. 
It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who has delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. God's declaration when the ra Jesus was raised from the dead is that as Jesus was adopted and approved of, so are we. Without the resurrection, there can be no justification for any of us, because it is in the resurrection that we are justified in Christ. Also, thirdly, and also importantly, if there was a physical resurrection, it assures us that one day we will receive resurrection bodies as Christ received a resurrection body. 1 Corinthians 6, 14 and 15. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body, and God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? There's a promise there that we will be raised to new life. We will receive resurrection bodies as Christ did. So as I say, this isn't just a simple, pleasant story. This, is, this isn't a doctrinal debate. This is key. This is central to our faith. That we understand that Jesus rose physically from the dead because it ensures our regeneration, our justification and the promise of our regenerated bodies. A grand truth that emerges from this story, as it does from none other in the gospel, is that the disciples didn't invent this resurrection story because they didn't understand it, let alone believe it. Jesus, we don't know from the gospel stories how Jesus was resurrected because none of the gospel authors saw it. How did they resist creatively imagining and spellbinding stories for the church? If you hadn't seen it, you'd make it up and you'd make it a lot more uh, special and wonderful than the story we have. They resisted that because they were not myth makers, but witnesses. Alistair McLaren wrote these words. The evidential value of the disciples slowness to believe cannot be overrated. Just just listen to that phrase again. The evidential value of the disciples slowness to believe cannot be overrated. They struggled to understand. Had they created this story and this myth of Jesus rising from the dead, we'd have had things a lot more spectacular than just an empty tomb and a couple of the guys sat on a, on a stone. They didn't believe the women. We've, we certainly wouldn't have had women uh, arriving to tell the story because they weren't able to give witness to anything in Jewish society. The only reasonable explanation for the apostles' devotion even to the cost of their own death. You don't die for something that's not true. They saw an empty tomb. They met a risen Lord. That's the only explanation. They came to believe in the word of God. They came to believe what Jesus had told them throughout time, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15. This is true. This, this has no other explanation. Now, also, as part of our reading this morning, we've looked at the Emmaus story. Two men encounter Jesus, or they, they, they don't know who he is. They tell him of their pain and confusion. And the story shows key traits for us of two things about the nature of God. These men are broken. There's great debate about whether they're uh, friends of the family who we don't know who they are actually not I not not with any accuracy but the story shows us a couple of things about the nature of God first of all it shows us that God cares about us Jesus doesn't appear in a miraculous way and just say you stupid people and then uh, give them faith he walks with them through their pain he listens to them he do if you notice in the, in the opening part of the story, he doesn't just tell them what uh, the answer to the question they haven't yet asked is. He speaks gently with them. So God cares about us. That's the first thing we learn from the Road to Emmaus story. And then the secondly thing we learn is that the Lord invites honesty from the people that he loves. It's not suggested that he, we're called to trumpet our doubts, but we're, we're to express them. We're to tell the truth to God. 
We're to be open with him. So he cares about us. And if you read in the story, as Jesus walks, they just pour out their hearts to him. And Jesus, I'm sure, delighted in that. And then it shows us that God's given us the scriptures for a reason. This is really, really, really important. Their hearts were warmed as Jesus took them back to the beginning of the story and opened the scriptures to themselves. If we find ourselves hurting and despairing and do not find the scriptures to speak into that condition, if when you're in the lowest place you can possibly be and you turn to the scriptures and they don't speak to you, then it's because you don't know well and well enough. The scriptures will always speak. I can say that in some of my darkest moments, I've opened the scriptures. Most recently, I, I was struggling and I opened the scriptures, my daily Bible readings, and it was Psalm 23. And the Lord just gave me a gift to help me at that moment. We need to study the Bible with an eye to our Saviour because everything to do with our salvation and shalom is yes, it's there in scripture. So this story shows us that God cares, that he invites us to be honest and open with him and that he meets that open and honesty through the scriptures with care and love. The risen Christ knows where you are today. He knows the geography of your life, the ins and the outs of it. He knows the temperature of your soul. He knows whether there is ice there or fire there. Whatever our state, his method is the same. To meet us where we are in his own personal love and grace. Listen to us and then giving us, give us the life energizing truth which scripture contains. This is the wonderful truth of Easter Sunday. That Christ did die and did rise again and it gives us guarantees of things to come. And that the risen Christ meets with his church and walks with his church and loves his church and teaches his church. Today is the greatest day of celebration. And the only thing I'd like to add to it is a quote from David uh, uh, Jeremy. He said, as we celebrate the resurrection this Easter, Let us remember that it is his life alone by which we must be revived daily until he returns. The resurrection is not like Christmas. The resurrection keeps us going in the long trauma of life because it makes promises of future hope. And it assures us this story of the road to Emmaus that God walks with us in deep knowledge of who we are and where we are. We're seeking for hope and purpose and peace in our lives at the moment. We see a world that's traumatised and we see no hope. Easter brings hope. Easter brings a glorious hope that is irreplaceable and unshakable. So walk the road to Emmaus with God this year. Tell him what you're thinking and how you're feeling. He cares and read your scriptures because there lies the answer and the comfort. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to celebrate this wonderful gift of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a glorious truth that brings us hope, life, promise, purpose. And we thank you for the story of the road to Emmaus, where it shows that you care, you want to hear our thoughts and hearts, deepest desires, and that you have an answer for those in scripture. Lord, thank you for this Easter Sunday. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
There are few emotions more powerful than hope. It's a spark inside you that brings a smile to your lips, a light that shows on your face, a feeling that lifts your head and pulls you forward. These days, hope like that often feels hard to come by. Maybe you've experienced your share of disappointments, but real hope is what the Christian faith claims to offer. A joyful expectation for the future, based on true events in the past, which changes everything about my present. Hope Explored is a three session series for anyone who is looking for a hope worth having. Whatever you do or don't believe, this is your invitation to explore, to discuss, to question, to discover. This is Hope Explored.